The Unshackled Waves, Episode 68. Hello and welcome to the Unshackled Waves podcast. I'm Tim Wilms, here for this week's review episode, and I'm joined once again by my co-editor-in-chief of The Unshackled, Zuka Fernando. Welcome again. Thanks, Tim, and hello, everyone. Now, apologies, the internet connection is bad again, so Zuka's audio quality is not going to be the best, but you'll just all have to deal with it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Now, last week, the results of the 2016 Australian Census were released. Uh, you all know that one where the website crashed on Census Night. Well, they apparently were able to finally get all the information about Australians they needed. And in their results, it showed that Australia is becoming more Asian, more Islamic, more atheist and less Christian. There's also more same-sex couples, but there's also still uh, more traditional families. The Australian Bureau of Statistics, who collected the census, they seem to be quite pleased about the demographic changes in Australia, uh, but it's worth considering, are these changes in Australia something to be pleased by? Uh, in Australian politics this week, the Abbott-Turnbull conflict continued. Uh, Turnbull responded to uh, Tony Abbott's alternative conservative manifesto last week by saying that if he's not Prime Minister anymore, he will leave the Parliament, which is code for he will cause a by-election in Wentworth, which the Liberals would lose and they'd lose their majority. Uh, Tony Abbott has, despite being criticised by many of his colleagues and former allies, has continued to speak out. He did so on the weekend. Uh, at, uh, talking about the democratisation of the New South Wales branch and also appeared at a Victorian branch meeting with Assistant Treasurer uh, Michael Suka. The polls are still bad and now questions are starting to uh, pop up whether Turnbull will survive to the ne next election and what's going to be done if he reaches the dreaded 30 news polls down in a row, which was the justification for deposing Abbott. Uh, also, uh, Australia's uh, worst regressive, I'd say, at the moment, Yasmin abdul Magid. She had the shortest ever comeback this week. Last week, she uh, published an article saying she was traumatised by the backlash to her Anzac Day tweet, and she felt that she needed to speak out to restore free speech and improve Australia's democracy. But a few days later, she announced that she was going to be leaving Australia and be going to London uh, for, for the foreseeable future, which was good news. And it shows that we can successfully run somebody out of Australia who is so anti-Australian. We at the Unshackled have no regrets about criticising her. We just hope that she takes more aggressives with her in, in the near future. Uh, Trump continues to trigger the American media. It started with his tweet about MSNBC host uh, Mika Brzezinski, I think I said that right, uh, uh, saying that she was bleeding from a facelift. I thought that was hilarious. They responded by calling him mentally ill. Uh, Trump responded by saying the media still can't handle that he's president, they're not. Then he tweeted a photo of uh, him uh, in a fake fight from uh, WWE where he's fighting the CNN logo. Uh, the media said he's inciting violence against journalists. Uh, however, it's a bit hypocritical of uh, them to say that he's inciting violence given that all of the actual violence and murder that the uh, mainstream media and the leftists have incited against Trump and his supporters. And it's also proved that the mainstream media is incapable of reporting real news. But let's start with the census results, Suka. So uh, Christianity, it's still the majority religion, 52%. Uh, Atheism's at 30%. Islam is now at 2.6%, which is now ahead of Buddhism at 2.4%. Uh, in the previous census, Buddhism uh, was the second most uh, uh, popular theist religion, uh, but now Islam shot up, which is a cause for concern. Yeah, Islam has grown 
um, quite considerably. I mean, I, I understand people are saying that you know, it's only 46%, but it has grown a lot. Um, and if you look at it, it's not very surprising considering the fact that we have a prime minister who doesn't care about um, the, the growth of Islam in this country, he doesn't seem to care about the connection between Islam and terrorism. So, you know, he he has his plans to take in more refugees, more Islamic immigrants without caring about our safety. So, you know, this isn't really a surprise if you look at um, the grand scheme of things. Um, so, you know, the critics might say that it's not a, a large growth. It is a large growth. Okay. Um, and secondly, Christianity's decline, I personally find it a bit more um, concerned. I think in Islam's growth is more of a short term sort of danger. I think Christianity's decline is a bit of you know, a bit of a long term thing that's been happening for centuries, um, for quite some time. Okay, and this rise in atheism, um, it's been happening for quite some time. Um and the problem is that it's resulting in other things, other harmful things, um, other controversial things that um, if I say them, I'll be labeled as a homophobe or a bigot or whatever. But we do know that there is an increase in same-sex couples. Um, I'm not trying to say anything against anyone. But I, am, I am saying facts. And the fact is that, you know, people are committing, there is an increase in people while committing acts that are very harmful. Um, and that is the fact. So we have seen, and I think it was a, it was a 30%, I think it was an almost 30% increase of same as couples over the past five years. Um, again, I, I'm not trying to attack anyone personally. I'm not trying to attack anyone. You know, I was saying, I was saying that there are English people choosing to do something that is harmful. I don't blame them. It's the modern age. I don't blame them. They're being influenced by particular things. Uh, but those are facts, and that's what's happening. Uh, it's interesting to note that the increase in same-sex couples, that was only from 33,000 to 47,000, so still a very low figure, yet all we seem to talk about is same-sex marriage in the national debate. You're right. Yeah, I mean, it's it's still a very small minority, um, but then it's, it's, it's even even within this minority, it's just a, a large section of that minority that is um, trying to advocate for such massive, um, you, know, you know, a radical social change by trying to change the definition of of marriage um, into. The, in, in their definition that makes them feel good. Um, and then when we try and say, like, let's say they use the victim card and say that, you know, all the same sex attracted children are very offended, or anyone who's prone to weak mindedness and not and preventing them from being strong minded individuals. Um, but you know, the fact that you know, this small, small minority is able to influence such a, such a huge, you know, um, proportion of our population. It's, quite, it's a call for concern, you know, the fact that the Liberal Party has a faction that is, you know, caving in to that, to that minority, um, you know, it's, it's quite a big problem. But I, I think what is good news is that the traditional family, you know, it's, not all, it's not all Aurelian yet, the traditional family is um, still a minority in Australia, so that's, that's, that's a, a positive side, that's good news. Yes, despite all the glorification of uh, single parenthood and uh, not having any children at all, the uh, family structure yeah. of couples with children is 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 still the the largest one. So uh, at least there's still that yeah. in Australia. Uh, it's interesting also to note that, and the Daily Telegraph had it on their front page. Uh, last week is that uh, Pauline Hanson was basically right. We we have been swamped by Asians. The mm. Daily Telegraph headline was "Welcome to Chinatown," and uh, I'm from Melbourne. We've got a significant Asian population, but whenever I go to Sydney, it's just like whoa. It's it's certainly ch uh, uh, quite a large demographic change there. It is because we do have um, we do attract a lot of international students um, to, to our university, and that is a huge source of the Asian migration. Um, you know, Asians obviously aren't are nowhere as harmful as Muslims, for example, um, or other particular groups like people from Africa who are you know resulting in you know this major crime problem in many cities. Um, but these Asians do tend to have a hard time in assimilating, and there is a huge distrust between us and the Asian community because we do know that historically Asian, well, Chinese people, I should say Chinese people, do have a connection with communism. We have seen stories where the Communist Party of China is infiltrating particular things. They're funding um, student protests, for example, um, and we saw that in 
on the ABC, surprisingly, surprisingly. Um, and you know that is the, that that is mainly the problem here. You know, the problem their government is able to influence the people to do particular things, and how their companies are come and brain is a huge part of that. Um, so I, I mean, you didn't have to see you you wouldn't have to see the actual uh, census results to realize that you know. Pauline Harrison was right. I mean, the fact that all companies are trying to buy up our land, buy up our property, is a huge example of how Pauline Hansen is right, or has been right for a while in one way or another. Maybe not in terms of actual migration, in terms of an actual overall swamping through buying up our property, for example. So, yeah, I think the article was quite a good, um, quite a good way to express the reality and show that, you know, we are, you know, trailing into China. So I call my university the University of Shanghai. I call it the University of Sydney um, because it is full of Chinese people. Many of them are my friends. But then, again, it is full of Chinese people, and that is quite concerning. Uh, I, I noticed that uh, Brian Burston, the New South Wales One Nation Senator, uh, reposted that front page on his Facebook page and, sa and said that, see, uh, Pauline is right. There was also another yeah. interesting thing about the census is that there's more Indigenous Australians or people identifying as Indigenous Australians. Uh, Andrew Bolt said that maybe because it's, you know, trendy and you get lots of extra benefits, but it also could be just down to race mixing because I meet so many, like, part Aboriginal people. Yeah, I think um, the thing is these days many people identify as Aboriginal. There are lots of people who are who are white people, they are white people. They have, you know, one great great grandfather who is Aboriginal, but they are white people who identify as Aboriginal because of that small contribution. Um so the definition of who Aboriginal is has changed. Um so therefore lots of people can identify as Aboriginal or Indigenous or whatever. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't say I'm not exactly sure if they do have a high birth rate. Uh, I personally don't think they do have very high birth rate. Um, I, I, I think it comes down to the fact that there probably is more race mixing, I suppose, um, which itself is up for debate because scientifically race mixing has, well, scientists, scientists have shown that race mixing can be harmful. So, I mean, you can say that that is a problem. So, I could say that that is concerning um, with, uh, if I was to use those studies. Um, I'm not going to comment on that right now. But maybe it is down to race mixing or, you know, people who have a very small Aboriginal ancestry or a very small element of Aboriginal ancestry saying that they're now Aboriginal um, in order to actually reap the benefits of identifying as Aboriginal. Now, we've talked about some of the demographic changes that were evident in the census, and the, what really disturbed me was the way that the Australian Bureau of Statistics promoted its findings. Like, they... Uh, they, they post on social media and their summary on their website were pointing to the fact that, yeah, this is great that we're so diverse. And, uh, and I wrote an article about how when they were commenting on the increase of um, Australians born in the Middle East uh, and Africa, and they had two hijab-wearing Muslims, I mean, it's, it, yeah. it's clear from that that they're happy about this or at, le at least more Islam in Australia. Uh, of, sh should we be happy about some of these demographic changes, or <laughs> do you think that you know we should debate you know what type of demographic makeup we want? Um, well, yeah, this is where I get angry. You know, we see our institutions saying we should be happy about the diversity. No, we shouldn't be happy. I'm happy. Um, I'm not a white person. Okay, I'm a brown person. I'm not happy with this um, because I don't want to see. Many Australians don't want to see so many Muslims in our country um, because it is a danger. That's the fact. The fact is. The presence of Muslims in Australia is a huge danger. You know, people are saying that, um, you know, well, we want a Muslim ban. People are saying, our, our opponents are saying that, you know, that will offend Muslims and that will result in them becoming more radical simply because they're offended. Well, in the, well then, we, 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 you know, that's, that's, that's a, a, a bigger problem. The fact that we can't actually control our migration because the Muslims who are living here are going to get offended and get radicalized and going to the hell out of us. Um, so, so the problem is um, the presence of Muslims in the country is a, is a danger for us, and that is a fact. Um, 
And I think that is the most, you know, the most uh, sort of short-term thing there is. I, mean, I know that people who are saying that um, yeah, there's a civic versus ethno factor in this, um, who are saying that, you know, as long as, well, civics are saying that as long as people are assimilated to our culture, they can come here. Um, the ethno-nationalists are saying that, no, you know, we keep Australia a white country. You know, those both have a no argument, ultimately. Those both promote um, assimilation in one way or another. Um, I think both can agree that the presence of Muslims, especially, is a problem, and the presence of many Chinese people is a threat to us. China is now on its way to imperial extent across the Pacific Ocean, um, not over, not overly, but in a very covert manner. So I think the presence of such Chinese migrants is a threat itself. Uh, obviously, the main concern for me is Islamic immigration because yeah. of the, the yeah. way that you know Islam treats other minorities uh, is a very violent religion as well. Like with regards to the Asianization of Australia, that that doesn't bother me too much uh, unless they yeah. they don't speak English, they don't uh, attempt to integrate. Yeah. But, I've grown up with a lot of second generation Asian Australians and yeah, they're pretty much uh, Aussies and like they're great to get along with. So yeah. as long as they're, they're all like that, then I think that's fine. And uh, you know, people like them are not going to have some, you know, soft spot for the Chinese Communist Party, I think. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, as I, said, as I mentioned, civic, as a civic nationalist, you, you don't mind Asian. And that's that, okay, because, you know, ultimately, Ultimately, us in the real right, no matter civic or ethno, um, you know, we we still promote assimilation. You know, we we want to have people who aren't a threat to us, um, and that's what matters. I think. I think ultimately. Um, so I think you know, as long as you know, I don't, I, I don't personally have a huge problem with Asians as long as they don't affiliate with the Communist Party, as long as they don't try and they will trade as long as they are part of agenda uh, by China. Um, but the thing is, thing is, the current evidence suggests that they, many of them are part of some sort of um, method to take Australia one way, one way or another, as well on the ABC with the Four Corners, um, the, with the um, CCP funding particular student protests, for example. Um, and as we have seen with various Chinese companies buying up property, which is very concerning. Um, this isn't like India buying with Adani. That's India. That's a, that's a democracy. This China buying, you know, all these property, all, all these properties in Australia, and that is quite concerning. So I think that, in that sense, um, the Asianization is a problem. But as long as we assimilate, that is the main issue. And many Asians do assimilate, and that's the thing to see is the Islamic immigration that is mainly a problem these days. Yeah. I will certainly see probably a lot more changes in the, the next census in uh, 2021. But let's move on to Australian politics, which is still dominated by the Abbott Turnbull conflict of uh, the media. That's what they're interested in talking about. So, yeah, as I said in my introduction, Turnbull said he will quit uh, politics if he's no longer uh, Prime Minister, which seems like a threat to uh, that he'll cause a by-election in Wentworth, which the Liberals will lose. I mean, because the, yeah. the seat of Wentworth now, it's pretty much an inner-city lefty seat. Yeah. And the only reason the Liberal, is, yeah. Liberals hold it is because Malcolm Turnbull is the local member. Yeah, and, and so, but Turnbull, after that article appeared, he said that he will fight the next election and expects to be prime minister for uh, a very long time, <laughs> which is like, <laughs> uh, I was like, yeah, right, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, Tony Abbott's continued to make public appearances. He's unrepented about uh, his, well, both for his quest to democratise the New South Wales Party and speaking out. Uh, against what he sees the the leftward uh, drift of the uh, Liberal Party, and like I said, the polls are are not improving. Now I know that there's a lot of uh, listeners of this show and also fans of the Unshackled who you know do have a soft spot for Tony Abbott and do think it was the wrong thing for the Liberal Party to dump him in 2015. But Abbott. Sp uh, speaking out in the manner that he is, it's it's causing infighting, instability, and that's all that's going to do is help Bill Shorten become prime minister, which is the worst possible outcome for Australia. 
Well, yeah, and that is the reality. I mean, the fact that Tony Abbott is um, constantly criticizing Malcolm Turnbull is actually a huge problem for the party because, as you mentioned, it's just going to result in people trying, well, people switching and people realizing that Labour is a better better alternative. It's not, well, people are going to say that Labour is a better alternative. Um, I, I completely agree with what Tony Abbott is saying. Okay, I completely agree. Um, I, I, you know, I do not like the left drift of the party. I, um, I, I, I agree with him. But the problem is his timing is very bad. You know, he, um, I think he's he's doing a very bad thing. He's doing a, the wrong thing by trying to sort of incite such division in the party. Um, because that's going to result in them losing. You know, he, I think uh, maybe he has. I've been thinking that maybe he does have an agenda. Maybe he wants to have the party just to sort of help they revitalize in the next election maybe or something because we have heard that the conservatives um, are wanting to see the party in order to make sure that they learn and listen and then try and fix itself um, in time for the next election so maybe Tony Abbott is trying to do that um, which I think is stupid um, but I you know I I, I just think it's bad that, that, that Tony Abbott is you know, criticizing Malcolm Taylor a lot because considering the, considering the fact that Tony Abbott himself wasn't really perfect during his prime ministership. Uh, it's kind of rich for him to criticize Malcolm Turnbull, where Malcolm Turnbull, in many ways, has been better in many aspects. Um, as we talked about, I think it was two weeks ago. Um, so yeah, I agree with him, but it's a problem. Yeah, uh, obviously Turnbull's uh, of the left, but where conservatives yeah. are still getting a lot of out of him, which is st yeah. still a good outcome. And yeah, I, I, I know that there's a lot of conservatives who, you know, wish Tony Abbott would return to the prime ministership, but I don't think that would change anything in the polls. That would just uh, f uh, make the Liberal yeah. Party seem more unstable. And it was interesting today, I published my article today warning about a shortened prime ministership on the same day as the Daily Telegraph uh, did their fake uh, f front cover of uh, July 5th, 2019, 100 days into a shortened prime ministership. And yeah. It's like tax, <laughs> taxes up, uh, jobs lost. Uh, I mean, yeah. it, it sets out, you know, a pretty horrible picture of, uh, of what Australia would be like under a shortened prime ministership. Yeah, I mean, all you need to do is look at, I mean, look at Victoria. But that's all you need to do see what would happen if we follow that mindset to, you know, teach the Liberal Party a lesson. You know, that won't work because, you know, many Victorians, um, you know, did that, I understandably did that. But then what has that resulted in? You know, it's resulted in a Labour Party wreaking havoc. Um, pushing radical gender theory, pushing cultural Marxism, you know, not caring about actual crime, um, caring more about feelings, doing nothing about, you know, uh, the apex ga gang. You know, if you want the entire country to become like that, to like become a labor led, then it's just going to result in more havoc in the entire country. So it's not going to work out. Um, you know, it's a bit like saying, it's, 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 Funny because you know it's those conservatives like me backing Tony Abbott. Um, you know they were saying that Tony was left prime minister. It's bad to him out. You know um, it's bad to um, stab him in the back because he was elected after all, and loyalty means something. Okay, yeah, we know that. I say that. But then um, the problem is you're not like saying that we should backstab. Malcolm Turnbull, even though he is now the less prime minister, even less prime so it's kind of ironic and hypocritical for you to complain that Tony Abbott was kicked out, um, even though he was elected, but then want to kick out Malcolm Turnbull, even though he was elected. You know, Malcolm Turnbull is still a leftist, but he has been okay for us um, in many ways. It's been bad, but he has been okay for us in many ways. And if you just have another leadership skill, if you have another another um, backstabbing scenario, it's just going to result in greater instability. It's going to result in the party being estranged from more people, and that's just going to make things worse. So you know, just keep us as conservatives. Let's keep us for this for now. And what if the the Liberal Party, what if they don't learn a lesson if they lose the 2019 yeah, exactly. election? I mean, what if they yeah. choose uh, an actual, like a leftist leader who does stand for left-wing policies, then it's basically worse than if we just had, you know, Turnbull, uh, Liberal Light re-elected? Yeah, if they choose someone like Christopher Pine to head the Liberal Party, that's going to make things 
Yes. I'm um, even more on the left. Um, so oh, that, that gamble. Would be like, oh, I, I can't, I can't imagine that. Yeah, I mean, there, there are numbers to describe because he is the one who's actually, who seems to be at the forefront of this liberal um, black hand leftist faction thing um, that's going on right now. Um, so, you know, if you, you know, you can't have that. It's a huge gamble. So why not just keep the status quo and keep Malcolm Turnbull and, you know, in the next election, um, try and actually appeal to people and maybe from then on try and do something about the leadership um, you know, and then make sure it's, actually ethical instead of bad having um, a prime minister again. Because uh, I don't think the Australian people really want a 50% renewable energy target which will send their power bills sky yeah. high and cause blackouts. But basically the uh, the people are like, well, look at this you know, rebel we've got in government. They're only interested in talking about themselves, you know, not concerned about us. We might as well just put the other mob in charge. I mean, that's sort of the yeah. simplicity that yeah. the, the voters have. Exactly. And people look at people, well, most people, most voters are superficial. They just look at the politicians' behaviors. You know, many people in America, for example, they didn't like Trump, not because they knew about him. You know, many people would agree with Trump in many ways, but they didn't like him because he just appeared to be unpresidential. You know, he, he was just too politically incorrect, too, you know, out there, too sort of, you know, rude or sort of, um, sort of, yeah, rude or, or careless in many ways. But even though in many ways they would agree with him. Um, and so that people are quite superficial when they go out of voting. Um, so therefore, I think it's best to have a good public relations um, method and maybe keep the issue as it is to make sure that people, because not everyone is as politically um, inclined as you are. Maybe it's best to, you know, appeal to the normal people and then just leave it as it is and make sure that the public doesn't keep losing more votes. Well, they've still got a year and a half to get their act together, so we just hope that, yeah. you know, Abbott can put aside his uh, bitterness yeah. and, you know, T uh, Turnbull can, you know, ma make sure that there's a good narrative to take to the 2019 election. But let's move on to yeah. uh, what we call the feel-good story of the week, which is the uh, <laughs> departure from Australia of Yasmin abdul Magid, uh, Australia's... Uh, most prominent regressive of the year. She announced her comeback last week, but then beginning of this week, she says she's gone. She's off to London. Yeah, you know, it, it was it, it was like New Year's Eve fireworks. You know, that was the moment um, when we heard that she was leaving this country. I feel very bad for London. Pray for London, okay? Pray for London. Um, I feel very bad for today, but still, we are very happy and very relieved that she is finally leaving. You know, I wish it was every single person like that who was leaving. Yeah, everyone was like, can you take my lead with you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that would have been even better about her world. Less time. And her, because she came, her comeback, uh, short as it was, was with an opinion piece in, in the Guardian, where she talked about free speech must be extended to all. And her, her criticism was that Australia's democracy is not representative uh, because it doesn't reflect the demographics of Australia. She she seems to forget that every Australian citizen, no matter what their race or whatever, can vote and. The par parliament reflects the people, so that's clearly the the parliament that people want. So you know, just because it doesn't you know fit Yasmin's view of what the the nation should be, doesn't make it illegitimate. Yeah, first with regard to that, I just you know I completely you know just ignored that. I was like, that is the most much uh, um you know from another country, a foreign country, coming here. This parliament does represent the people. Well, guess what? You're a migrant. Okay? I don't go around complaining about the graphics of the House of Representatives because I know I'm a migrant. Okay, um, I understand that if a white person migrates to my, my original country, then they then they wouldn't come either because they know that they're a migrant. Okay, um, it's how it is. Um, and that's firstly. You know, secondly, um, she should know that there are at least two. MPs in Parliament for Muslim, at least two. Um, there's Ed Husick, there's, I think it was Anne Ali, I think it was. Um, Ed Husick's a white yeah, Muslim, I, though, so sort of he only half counts. Yeah, 
half he half counts. Okay, well let's just say one point five. That represents the demographics. I mean there's what, a two point six percent of our country is Muslim, so I'm pretty sure, you know, 1.5 people in in the in a in a, in a lower house would be equal to 1.5 of the country or something. I'm pretty sure that would reflect the country. So thirdly, she used a photograph. She was like, you, know, you get a photo of the lower house, and you'll see that it's, you know, she was implying that it's full of white men. Um, you know, well then, guess what? You know, you're just completely regressive in that sense. Uh, and well, fourthly, Eric Beth gave a good um, response by saying that you should go back to an Arab dictatorship and tell me if you like that better, because we have, we live in a country where we have representative democracy, um, where everyone is able to vote, and where the people, where the MPs are chosen based on who people vote for. Um, and if you don't like that, if that isn't perfect enough, then please go to an Arab dictatorship where women just got the right to rise, for example, where women, I'm pretty sure, just got the um, right to vote or are still trying to fight for it. Um, to go there, but she didn't. She went to another representative democracy in the UK, so you know, she didn't go to a place that was an alternative. She went to a similar place anyway. Uh, and she claimed that she was traumatized by, you know, all the, you know, racist abuse that was, like, heard away, allegedly. But it's because she said stupid things, like saying that, yeah. you know, Australian Western democracy didn't work, that, you know, if we should... Uh, on Anzac Day, we sh we shouldn't focus on you know the uh, diggers who died in the world wars. Instead, focus on yeah. the you know refugees. And of course, uh, her ludicrous you know statement that started it all that Islam was the most feminist religion. Now you know, uh, you're, you're being criticised because you're saying stupid things. And if you can't handle yeah. the criticism, then maybe maybe you should just. You know, well, she's obviously, I think, taken the advice and uh, maybe she's just going back to being an engineer, which if she can't handle, you know, is triggered by, you know, all these people criticizing her, just go back to being an engineer. I mean, that uh, I think you'd make a better contribution to, you know, yeah. more of not Australia, but London by just sticking to engineering yeah. rather than spewing all this identity politics. Yeah, well, firstly, to live in a country where a woman can be an engineer in the first place, um, if she goes to an alternative Arab dictatorship, that probably wouldn't even be possible. Um, but yes, as you mentioned, as you said, yes, you're completely right. Because, um, it's her stupidity that's resulted in the criticisms. I know lots of Muslims who are, you know, they are saying that Islam has a problem, and people aren't believing them because they are telling the truth. Islam does have a problem. Okay, um, we know that there was an Islamic. Um, in the in the USA, who voted for Trump? She was on CNN twice, I think it was. I forgot her name, but she was on CNN twice. She said she was she supported progressive values. She was a feminist. She was a Muslim. I found quite ironic and inconsistent in many ways um, that he was progressive, a feminist, and a Muslim. But that's okay. Um, she says she voted for Trump because she knows that even though he's progressive, she knows that Islam has a problem, and she knows that the current wave of progressivism is forgetting the fact that Islam is the antithesis to progressivism, to their progressivism. So, you know, the, if there was, if, if um, Yadmin was like that woman, she was saying that, you know, I am Muslim, but I do know that Islam has a problem, and that I have a problem, and that Pauline Hansen may have a point, she shouldn't be going through any of this. If she, if she wasn't criticizing a system that allows a woman to become an engineer, that allows a woman to reveal her opinion in public television for everyone to hear, if she doesn't like a system that allows that, then she, she must expect criticisms and she must expect people to make fun of her because those are just stupid opinions. I'm sorry, but they are. Yeah. And, and of course, well, I actually haven't heard too many, you know, butthurt leftists say, oh, you know, we've chased this, you know, poor, you know, Muslim woman out of Australia. I think yeah. that's good. Yeah. Like, you know, we, yeah, we, yeah. we sent her a message that, you know, we don't want your views in Australia and she's taking her advice and leave. That's good. I'm glad that she's gone. Australia's better off with without her. And and like I said, hopefully more will leave. I, I didn't realise that, you know, we could be that powerful, that we could, you know, uh, get someone out of Australia like that. We only want, you know, grateful people here who, you know, want to yeah. you know, be part of the Australian community. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, 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 we migrants who are simulate and who appreciate the opportunity they have here. We don't need migrants who are attacking or and or rejecting the groups 
who, you know, a hundred years ago, they it was it was their action resulted in our country becoming a prosperous country that allowed refugees to come here in the first place, that allowed migrants to choose Australia in the first place. You know, it's thanks to those troops during World War One, um, who secured, you know, our our safety and our protection. So it stands that we are prospering in many ways. So if you can't appreciate that, that is completely in, insulting. That's insulting. That's triggering. That is triggering. That's justified triggering. Okay. Um, so therefore, you know, please leave. And thing, um, I feel bad for England though, and I hope she isn't too harsh on them. I hope she doesn't join forces with um, the mayor of London and try and you know drop more gyms. Um, but you know, I, I, I hope since she she did. Um, criticize our system. I hope she actually goes to and lives in an actual Arab dictatorship um, to see if she likes it better, because she apparently seems to prefer that over this. Yeah, and we certainly at the Unshackled have no regrets about uh, our criticisms of her. Yeah. And, you know, it's just yeah. part of the public debate. I mean, people say, have said nasty things about us, but we just, you know, get yeah. over it. Like, it's just part of the, the modern world. And, of course, today we found out that Channel 7 withdrew an internet poll uh, asking readers uh, whether they were glad that she was leaving. And uh, Yasmin said herself that, oh, I'd encourage racist comments. Well, us at The Unshackled, you know, we are not going to be censorists like Channel 7 who ended up taking it yeah. down. We have launched our own uh, Yasmin poll, so we would encourage you to vote that and exercise your democratic free speech right to criticise her for having stupid views. Yeah, we have created a poll um, on our website and you will see it now when you're watching the podcast. So, um, so yeah, you know, yeah, because we, you know, came into censorship. We don't, you know, we, don't, we, we promote debate because we know that debate is part and parcel of living in Australia, okay? So, you know, please go vote there um, because we want to encourage actual debate regarding Islam and we know that people um, don't like um, an actual majority for, for justified reasons, not, not just because they like Islam, but for justified reasons. As a reminder, the, seven, the Channel 7 poll, I think it had 85% of people who wrote, yes, they are happy to do that. Um, so that's a good result. Okay, so let's turn to the United States now, and Trump has continued to trigger the media. So, yep, as I said, it started with his tweet about Mika Bromovinsky is saying she was bleeding badly from a facelift. She is co-host of an MSNBC show, uh, Morning Joe. Uh, her co-host is Joe Scarborough, who's a Republican, but he's a never-Trump uh, one. And it was yeah. funny, she said, Mika, oh, I'm okay, but I worry that the president's mentally ill. And, and this is, again, <laughs> like... Uh, you know, the media can dish it out but can't take it. Like her saying that, you know, oh, I, you know, it's so terrible what the president said. Like, how can they be such snowflakes? Like, how did you get to be, like, the host of, like, a national TV show if yeah. you, you know, offended by, like, an insult that, you know, the president threw you away? Like, I thought, I thought it was pretty, like, funny. Like, you know, uh, bleeding from a facelift, that's better than anything I could come up with. Yeah, um, Mika Brzezinski, yeah, um, she, um, the thing is, uh, I first don't even think it was an insult, um, saying that she was bleeding from her, she was bleeding from her face, I guess, I don't think that was an insult to begin with, because it was the truth, probably, because, you know, plastic surgery does result in Oh, well, she claims she hasn't face. had a facelift. All oh, right, okay, well, I mean, well, well, the fact is, the fact is that, you know, if you did have it, then you would bleed, um, so I think it was quite good for Trump, for Trump to say, and I think it was quite funny. Um, you know, I think the fact that she's offended, I don't think she's offended. I just think she's actually thinking it. She finally feels the progressive, the feminist, trying to say, you know, I'm offended that this president is mentally ill. You know, please take my side. I'm the victim here, even though I do not really contribute anything to our society by, you know, airing out my uninformed opinion. Um, so, you know, just take my side, I'm a victim, and I'm trying to use this offended tactic to try to, I don't think she's actually offended. Um, but, yeah, I think it, the fact, the problem these days is that all these main media hosts, TV hosts, they contribute nothing, and they just continue berating the, the president for nothing. Yeah, and... 
you know, they've been trying to tear down Trump by any means necessary, including the spreading of fake news. And we just saw that yeah. secret footage where a CNN producer yeah. admitted that the uh, Russia collusion exactly. story was fake and they were pushing it exactly. to, uh, to get ratings. And it's interesting that the media, they're allowed to spread all of these, you know, lies and fake news, yet, yet Trump's not allowed to respond. He's just supposed to, you know, just sit there and get repeatedly punched by the, the media and, and not respond. Uh, well, well, Trump did some punching back of his own when he tweeted a video of him fighting the CNN logo, which uh, was from when he appeared on uh, WWE uh, 10 years ago, which is the wrestling which is fake. He wasn't really yeah. beating someone up. It was fake. And also <laughs> wrestling is a legitimate sport. You know, people go and see. So to say that he was inciting violence is, you know, ridiculous, uh, especially given the fact that there's plays which, you know, stab mm. Trump-like figures, which we've talked about before. I mean, you know, if th uh, this is, like, just ludicrous. It is. I mean, considering the fact that, you know, there are leftists who are killing trying to assassinate um, Republican um, uh, senators and members of the of parliament, you know, considering the fact that they, they have those and they have the nerve to say that Trump is inciting violence, but they're not saying that the left is inciting violence, you know, but if their own side, they wouldn't criticize their own side. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, it's just, it's, it's just wrestling, you know, and I think, you know, it's quite funny, it's quite hilarious um, because CNN is the one who's reporting on fake news. You know, they admitted on that video um, that, you know, that it, it was all fake, you know, it was all fake. They, they were just trying to get the ratings out. Uh, ratings are up high, they say, you know, la this time last year, they were quite low. And now thanks to Russia, you know, it's all up high, it's all up there. And they're using that, they're, they're milking that, that, you know, controversy. Um, and get, get, get ratings. That's what they're trying to do. And people are falling for it, um, despite the fact that there is no evidence regarding it. So, you know, CNN isn't to be trusted. It's, it is very fake news. Um, it's the fake news network, as Trump said. A and fraud news network fact, it is now. Oh, is it? Well, I mean, that, that's the matter. The fraud news network, because they are, they are misleading and, you know, misleading and keeping people away from the truth. That is, huge. That, that is a huge problem. The fact that the media is keeping people away from the truth actually shows something, it says something. Um, so therefore, I think, you know, the, the, the wrestling video, it's nothing to get worked up about. It's very hilarious because the have seen and he probably would deserve something like that, misleading millions of people in that way. Uh, let's not forget the non-news that they report. Remember how they they all went into, uh, you know, overdrive uh, talking about, you know, Trump's uh, kefefe uh, tweet. I mean, they talked about that for yeah. about 48 hours. I mean, like, you know, the president, like, mistyping a tweet and then falling asleep, like, that that's the biggest news story in the world? Like, really? I mean, the, the fact that they focused more on that rather than focusing on Hillary Clinton's scandals. You know, that just you know, re reveals everything there is to reveal. You know, the fact that they focus on this, you know, this, this typo rather than focus on all the scandals, all the crimes, all the sins Hillary Clinton has committed in her life, you know, rather than you know, reporting on things like Pizzagate, which is controversial, but which actually has lots of evidence. You know, they, they choose to focus on this, you know, focus on things with no evidence or focus on non-news. Um, you know, so I think that the rates, you know, they may be high, but they are declining. And that, that, speaks, for them, that speaks for itself because no one with a mind is watching you. And people with a mind who do watch you, they watch you because they just want to look at the stupidity. You know, they, they're just, we are just completely, we are just completely shocked by your, demonstration of your stupidity and ignorance that that is hitting us and it's, inter it's entertaining so already it's really high but already it's high people are entertaining themselves with your stupidity and there's also been you know a lot well there's always been criticism but it's been more intense recently that trump's insults to uh various people is not uh, presidential but as trump said himself it's not presidential it's modern presidential he's a different type of president yeah. i mean this yeah. is why the american people voted for him because he wasn't a yeah. robotic boring politician he was colorful you know he wasn't afraid to you know fight back against people who were attacking him i mean this is why we elected trump i mean 
you know, this is this this is what we like about him that, you know, he doesn't, yeah. he doesn't hold back. And so, you know, or he, you know, just because he's not your, you know, ordinary president, like, so what? I, I quite frankly think that, you know, it is very presidential for a president to fight back against people who are unjustly criticizing him, people who are unjustly attacking him 24 hours a day. You know, it is presidential. I expect that from a president. That's what a president should be doing. That's what people vote for him because people have missed that sort of president. We saw that. Um, I think we saw that with um, with Ron Reagan. I think Ron Reagan was a bit better at it um, because he did have his acting experience. So I think he was a um projecting his um response response i think trump um i do agree, I do agree that in many ways trump may be a little bit too um sort of doing doing it too much sometimes you know with his insult with insults um with people to misunderstand especially in this day and age but that is what I expect from a president. I expect a president to not stand down to actually you know give them what they deserve to say things how how they are along with acting professional, along with you know, acting in, in in a posh way, when times call for it. But, you know, we live in a day and age where a president is required to defend himself, he is required to say things as they are, to, you know, to, to reveal the truth without being politically correct, because it's 2017, it's the current year, you know, you can't have a president who is always posh, you know, because we, we, live, we live in a day and age where you have to, be politically incorrect in order to actually save your country. And, and nobody died because of his tweets and no taxpayer money was wasted, unlike, you know, <laughs> previous actions by presidents. I yeah. think that is uh, a lot bigger deal than, you know, just something, you know, mean he said on Twitter. I mean, people forget that Trump's yeah. actually achieving a lot, which the media isn't focusing on. Um, I mean, hello, the, the Mexican um, immigration has... The, 40%. Um, you know, the media did report on the fact, they did report on how many Mexicans are actually um, discouraged from coming into America, but um, obviously didn't report it on a, on, in a good way. For some reason, it doesn't make them happy that, you know, there are now less criminals who come, who come to America as migrants, that there are less you know, illegal migrants who are raping women. It doesn't make them happy for some reason. You know, it makes them sad, the fact that, you know, illegals can't come there and leave their country and leave their, leave their country short while they bring in more criminals into, into the United States and start hurting women or start hurting children or start stealing. That doesn't, that doesn't make them happy. The fact that a president wants to prevent his country from going through all that micro that are crying doesn't make them happy. Um, but they, they did report that in a, in a very emotive, in a very emotive way that you know, Mexicans are, less Mexicans are coming into America now. Um, you know, Trump has achieved a lot. Okay, and if it, if you don't report on that, then people will continue to not you know, ignore you because the majority, the entire majority, actually don't care about you anymore because you have proven that you are able to actually give the people the truth that they deserve. Well, certainly. Trump's, you know, record, I would encourage people to actually look at his achievements rather than tune yeah. into the mainstream media. But that's all that we've got time for for this week. So thank you once again, Sukath, for being my co-host. It was my pleasure. And of course, the usual reminders apply at the end of the show. Please, if you haven't signed up to our email list, please do at theunshackled.net slash subscribe. Please consider becoming a patron on Patreon of The Unshackled. We've arranged some awesome benefits for people who sign up to support us. Unshackled merchandise is on sale at the uh, uprightmarket.com and don't forget to subscribe to the show you can do so on soundcloud itunes stitcher TuneIn radio or view the video version of youtube and of course don't forget to keep checking the unshackled.net on a regular basis for all the latest news thanks once again for listening and we'll see you next time